Hey everyone, today we're going to be working with the Ascend Python SDK and uh, show you, uh, for example, how one might use it as part of development as well as uh, CICD processes of deploying to staging and then production. And to get us started here, I've created a couple of different uh, data services in our Ascend demo environment. The first one is going to be our Ascend uh, staging environment, where we'll be first working on components, uh, and then a production environment that has our production data flow uh, that we'll work on in a moment here. Taking a look at the staging data service, see here that we have one data flow, this taxi cab flow. And we're going to work with quite a simple data flow here of just three components so that we can keep track of all the different moving pieces. Uh, so uh, what I've got here is a read connector component that's just pulling from S3, a SQL transform component, and a PySpark component so that we can see one of each kind of type here. Working with the Ascend SDK is as simple as just pip installing it from PyPy. Uh, it does require uh, Python uh, 3a and above. Uh, and I have one here locally that we can work with. So let's go ahead and get in a Python REPL. Uh, and one of the first things that we'll do is we'll import the client. Uh, the client object is how we will work with the Ascend environment. You can optionally pass in credentials straight into the client or do as I've done here, where the credentials are stored on my local machine uh, and this client is going to pick them up. So all we do is instantiate the client with one required argument, which is the environment of Ascend that we're using. Here's the demo environment that I was referencing earlier. Uh, and at the client level of the SDK, we have what we call our imperative SDK, um, a little bit of a lower level SDK that allows you to do everything programmatically that you might do with Ascend. So for example, if you can list things in the UI or you want to be able to update things, all of those translate into function calls off of a client. Uh, for the full list here in our documentation, uh, you can scroll down and see uh, a full table that presents uh, every method that exists on this client. So for example, creating um, creating components or elements, um, as well as listing things out. Just to make sure our client is wired up correctly, let's go ahead and do an imperative call for listing out the data flows. So you can just uh, head up to there. Um, it takes one argument of the data service ID. Um, and if we run that, we see that we get um, a response value here um, of our singular taxi cab flow. So looks like we're good there. We won't spend too long on the imperative lower level part of the SDK today. Um, as I mentioned, it's fully documented and uh, can help to be automated scripts. But as we're working in CICD processes, uh, most people will work with the uh, higher level or the declarative part of our SDK. Uh, and that's uh, the second part of the SDK that we document um, in here of the low level versus the high level. So in working with the high level SDK, we do have a uh, helper to jumpstart your project into working locally. Uh, and so for that, uh, we go ahead and bring in um, this uh, download uh, data flow helper uh, from the SDK. And what download data flow allows us to do is um, with the uh, arguments and passing in our client and our data service um, and our data flow, it allows us to download uh, what's in Ascend that was maybe built through the UI um, into source code. So when we run that, we now have a source directory on our machine that we can go check out. So this is that source directory where we get uh, two different things. One is a Python file and the second is a folder. So inside of the Python file, we have the full definition of that data flow. So for example, pulling these up by side by side, one of the first things that we have here is a read connector from S3. And so one of the first things we have in here as well is a read connector definition. Now this is a fully valid Python file, uh, which allows you to then refactor things, move things around, use things more programmatically, um, and more naturally just work with code and objects uh, than working with configuration files. And so we can see in this read connector, we're using uh, S3 as well as uh, our schema that we have here of pickup drop off um, latitudes which and longitudes, which matches what we have in this S3 component as well of the pickup and drop off latitudes and longitudes. Next up, there's a SQL transform component. So in that, that's one of our first definitions transform. This happens to be of type SQL query um, and is pulling its actual uh, source code definition file from this filter latitude SQL. So by default, this download data flow helper will create one source code file for every component. Right. So if we pull that open on the side here, 
this filter latitudes file is just a quite a basic a select star, um, which matches the select star as here. Uh, one discrepancy that you might notice is that our SQL is actually a parameterized SQL, uh, and this allows it, the SQL to be more reusable. So the inputs are not embedded in our source code of the SQL. However, our inputs are passed in through the component definition. This allows us to reuse the SQL file into other components if we need to. All right, time for that final transform. This is the PySpark transform, just so you can get a sense of that. Looks very similar to that we're declaring that this is a Python v3. Um, and similarly, we're passing in a code file. This one happens to be called count.py, um, since the component was called count. Um, and similarly, if we take a look at that, uh, the component code file has exactly what we expect um, from the ascend component. Um, in this case, it's essentially just a null uh, or an identity operator of taking the data frame and returning it back out, um, which matches what we have uh, in ascend in here, which is just taking the data frame and passing it back out. And so that's our uh, basic no op uh, data flow that we're working with here of these three components. For this file that it's downloaded, if we go head down to the bottom of this code definition file, um, Ascend has uh, some sample calls to help of what it looks like to apply this data flow as well. Uh, and what application of a data flow does is it will create, update, or delete any components according to this definition against what we have in Ascend. So because this file is something that I just downloaded, um, if we were to run it in our terminal, then essentially uh, we've created a no-op application where all of these components have just been updated as appropriate um, and nothing has changed in Ascend, so nothing has rerun. However, let's start working on the local development experience, uh, editing some of these codes, testing them, getting to a place that we're ready to push it up to staging, push up to staging, um, and then see what it looks like to do the same for production. Heading back over here, um, next to the source directory, I've also created a test directory. Um, you're free to create these however you'd like. Um, as you know, ascend components are fairly functional. So uh, input comes in very functionally, you get an output, and it's all either data frame interfaces or SQL type um, interfaces, which are basically data frames as well. Uh, so it makes it really easy to come up with testing strategies. For this particular example, I found a very uh, a simple example of where we're creating one test helper um, for every component file. Uh, so one of the first test files we've created here is test filter latitudes. Um, and so if we head back over to create these side by side, um, we essentially have uh, a little test harness that takes a Spark session, some edge case data that we're working with, uh, two different pickup latitudes of 40.7 and 40.8, um, and a little helper that basically just takes the code file that the SQL sits in um, and runs it against this input data frame to get to an output data frame that we can make an assertion on. So very straightforward. In this case, I'm using data frame asserts, but you know, certainly you could do this um, with more SQL assertions as well. Uh, let's head over here and run our tests. We should have two failing tests. I wrote one failing test for each one of these components, one for test count and one for test filter latitudes. Um, and so once this has a chance to run, we should see that there are two failures for us to fix up locally. There's our test filter latitudes issue, where we expected there to only be one remaining entry. Um, but because right now we're doing a select star, um, we're not filtering out the invalid latitudes. So let's go ahead and fix up the SQL code here. And for now, we'll just say that um, we just want entries where the pickup latitude is uh, uh, greater than or equal to the string of 40.8 for the moment. Keep it simple. Rerunning our tests. We should be able to see now that we're down to one failure um, just on the test count, um, and we can fix that one up subsequently. Perfect. One passed, now one failed. Let's go ahead and fix up this other test as well. So on this test counts record, looks like with the same uh, just basic pickup latitudes that are coming through, uh, we're checking that we return one value, um, and we're checking that that value is just a uh, column with CNT um, and two. So basically, we're just trying to aggregate the data frame and create a count column. So let's go ahead and fix up the code as well. Um, just We'll just add a simple count star for right now. And we'll just alias that as our test says as CNT. So let's go ahead and run that. Um, and in theory, now we should have two green tests after fixing up all of the code. Perfect. All right. So now all of our code is valid. We've completed the local development lifecycle here. Uh, and now we're ready to push it up to staging to make sure that all of the local testing and unit testing that we've done here um, and all of our code actually works in an end-to-end -end pipeline. Um, so we're going to go ahead and push that up to our staging environment. 
Um, now, as you remember, um, from that component definition file, which we had as our taxicab flow pi, um, this was set up for us as a runnable Python file. So we can go ahead and run it and do this data flow apply. Uh, separately, you know, you are free to make this SDK call um, however you'd like. Um, and I have been working at the data flow level today uh, just to keep less moving pieces as we work through this. But um, as you build up your practice, uh, most folks will start to do this uh, at the data service level. So applying the whole data service and all of the pipelines within it. All right. So heading back over to our terminal, from here we can go ahead and run our file. So this should push up our data flow definition up to staging, uh, in which it then should pick up the changes. So now, because this component hasn't changed, it remains up to date. Uh, and within these components, if we open these up, we should see now our updated code in that this one is filtering to all pickup latitudes greater than 40.8. Um, and similarly, in this count component, we're actually creating a count um, instead of just returning the, the same data frame that was passed in. We'll go ahead and give a couple minutes for Ascend to get up to date with this data flow. Perfect. We can already see with the record counts that instead of 1.45 million records flowing all the way through, we're making some progress as well. So looks like the latitudes have been filtered down um, already. And uh, we can go ahead and even check the partition profile if we wanted to be sure. There we go. All these pickup latitudes, the min range now is 40.8. So this is looking quite valid. Uh, similarly, if we head over to the count component, we can check out the records. All right, that counts looking good, 362,000, which should match, yes, 362,000. So uh, we essentially have a valid data flow that we've been able to inspect in staging and determine the validity of. I did this manually as part of this inspection, but you may add in validation type components into your flow. Um, your CI CD process that have deployed to staging might have automated checks against some of these components to check the validity of it as well. Once you've been certain of the validity of that data flow, then of course it's time to push this into production. Now, if you remember, I had indicated that we had a Ascend demo production data service available to us as well. Uh, and in that data flow, since we haven't pushed code there yet, it's still running the original code, which is just essentially the select star um, and the um, return the same data frame in um, of the same 1.45 million records all the way through and through. This is the part where Ascend starts getting really cool, uh, in that we've pre-computed the artifacts for production in our staging data flow. So at this point, we've paid the cost of the Spark computation. We've computed these artifacts for production. And so what it looks like to deploy to production is um, instead of calling this apply data flow, or this data flow applier against the Ascend demo staging data service, we would call it against the Ascend demo production data service. Um, right now, this variable is just hard coded, but you could uh, see uh, passing this through through an environment variable, uh, through configuration files, whatever workflow best sits, suits your own company. Um, and so at this point, uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'll just change it in this code right here. Uh, and so now when we redeploy that, um, what we're actually doing now is applying our changes to Ascend demo production. And if we look at Ascend demo production, it's immediately up to date now. There was no actual Spark computation. Uh, Ascend has figured out with this code artifacts of these code SHAs, uh, it can reuse the output artifacts that were pre-computed in staging. So you can deploy to production with absolute confidence that you're going to get exactly what you think you're going to get. There won't be any additional issues of, oh, this time around the data didn't compute correctly, or you know maybe some executors ran out of memory, or any of those normal kinds of um, variances that you might get in a production deploy. We've pre-computed those assets, and I've just switched a pointer over to them um, as part of that. Um, and Ascend is managing all of that for you to ensure which artifact is usable, which artifact is not, which exactly things do need to be recomputed if something does need to be recomputed. Um, so just like that, we have created um, uh, essentially a kind of an immutable type production deploy, um, or I like to think of it as kind of like a Docker deployment rather than um, pre-Docker, you know, uh, live pip installing your packages as part of a code deployment. Uh, and then, you know, maybe the network kind of flakes out and some of those pip packages don't get installed or something like this, or the versions change on you. Um, you know, you're basically just pulling down the actual artifacts from that pip install. Same idea here. Um, rather than live computing what's happening in production, we're just going to point to those artifacts. Um, 
and uh, as I said, Ascend will manage the quality and the integrity of all of that to make sure that you know artifacts aren't being stomped over from staging versus production, that production isn't pointing to invalid artifacts, anything like that. Which, if we think about this, also enables one other part of this flow, which is the production rollback. So, for example, here, if we look at our source code, you know, we've made code changes to some of the definitions, some of the um, the definition of count, filter latitudes, et cetera. And let's say for whatever reason, um, everything's not looking quite like it should, um, and we need to do a production rollback um, and fix up our code. Well, we can go ahead and just do a git checkout of our source directory, which will roll all of that code back. Um, and uh, in here, let's say, uh, you know, we just want to go ahead and send that over to production. Then rerunning this will push all of that old code back up into production. And as we see here in a moment, Ascend will actually just snap back to the previously created production artifacts of the 1.45 million, again, without reprocessing. So Ascend is constantly looking at the um, existence of, is this artifact already been created for this code? What needs to rerun? Why? Um, such that you get these production deployments that um, are very easy to roll forward, also very easy to roll back. That's what it looks like to do some CI CD as well as work programmatically uh, with Ascend through the SDK. Thanks, everyone.